fifty. Uh, parametric it's four point eight fifty, right? Okay, let's try it. fifty right there. Ooh, very cool. This is a good one. I like this one. So, why is this one kind of a a new thing, or why is this one a little bit involved? What's different about this one? Yeah, it's just simply second derivative. So you just have to be really careful of the process. You have to be really, really careful about the process. Just play around for a second. Ready? We know that x is we know that x is equal to t q plus t. So can you tell me what can you tell me what dx dt is? Three t squared plus what one. And we also know that dy dt is equal to what two t. Okay, that helps us. We know. Do you remember this? We know that dy dx is equal to what? dy dt over what? dx dt. So what's that going to be? 2t over 3t squared plus 1. Oh. Sort of, kind of, sort of. Let's see if it cleans up. Hold on, let's just try it here. What do we get? 6t squared plus 2 minus what? 12t squared over the same thing. Nice. So what do we end up with? Negative 6t squared, 2 over 3t squared plus 1 squared. Is that, is that it? Is that? It, it, seems, it seems like it might be, we might be really close to what we want. We might be really, really close to what we want. Is this, I have a question, it becomes cubed. Okay, so the everything we just did right there, so we needed to do this work. We, we needed this because if we did without that, we wouldn't be able to get this. What rule did we use right there? The quotient rule. So we're okay with this. Okay, we're okay. It's not bad. So if you're okay with starting here, that's okay. But this is the key right here, this equal sign. Why is that true? here. This is not, we got dy dx, but dy dx was in terms of just what? Just t. So when we did the quotient rule, when we did the quotient rule, looking for the second derivative with respect to y, we differentiated something with, something with just t's with respect to not, not t. <laughs> can you do that? You can, but that's not what we did. To sum up, this right here is what you need to focus on to understand this question right there. And what were we missing? This right here. That's it. Does that kind of clear things up for you a little tiny bit or push you in the right direction? A little tiny bit? A little bit? Sort of? The, 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 we go back, I think it was this, was it this day when we had it? I gave you the, at the bottom of the page, it was a, it was the second, we did this right here. This is the thing that you might have just looked up and applied at this point. Look what it says. Let's go back to here. I'll give you more space. I'll tell a story here. It centers around this picture right here. And you can't see it because it's broken. Let's look at that picture here. The blue curve represents what? A function. Any function, right? Cartesian coordinates, that's what we're in right now. That's nice. We're going over a delta x and we're going up a delta y. And the length is approximately that same, which we're going to disassemble in a second. What theorem is that entirely based on? What theorem? Yeah, what, that's not a theorem. What, what theorem is the distance from the Pythagorean theorem? Exactly. First question is, okay, so this is an infinitesimal amount of horizontal change, and this is an infinitesimal amount of vertical change. How do you get this right here? How, how is delta y approximately equal to f prime delta x? Yeah, kind of. Well, how about this? Ready? We know that dy dx is delta y over what? Delta x. Correct? But what, what is dy dx? What's another way to write that? f prime of x, right? So you know that f prime of x is, another way to write that is, is delta y over delta x. So what does delta y equal? f prime x times, yeah, and depending on the size, it can be an approximate. Exactly. 
Okay, so we have a triangle. What's the angle measure right here? 90 degrees. Nice. So the base of our triangle is delta x. What's the height of our triangle? f prime x delta x squared. Oh, we're squaring it. And then if we want the distance from here to here, the straight line distance, right? It's the square root of that. You're like, oh, okay, what's the point? It looks like we just made it worse. But what is in both of these? Ah, delta x square root of 1 plus f prime of x quantity what? Squared. Ah, there it is. So that right there represents this distance. This distance is an approximation of the curve length. Agreed? As you make it smaller and smaller, it becomes, does the accuracy go up or down? The accuracy goes up. The smaller the segment, the accuracy goes up. So you remember when you added together an infinite, infinite number of rectangles to get an area? And you took that limit and it approached the actual area? The same thing is going on right now. The same thing is going on right now. So for example, let's just dive right in. Stay standing. Set up and evaluate an integral to compute the length of the curve, y equals x cubed from 0 to 5. Anybody wants to take a random stab at what the integral is for this? Who wants to guess? Come on. Who wants to guess? It's an integral. Zero to five. Zero to five. Okay, whole everybody's guessing. Excellent. Of what? One plus three x squared. Three x squared squared. Three x squared. Dx. You're figuring it out. That's it. Wicked cool. Am I having you do this as Riemann sums and using limits? No, that's not cool. Don't do that, Mr. Seaman. Here we have an integral. Yay! We have the statement, the length, what we wanted as an integral. Now, the challenge is, if I gave this to you on a test and I said, find me the actual numeric, like, evaluate that right there, you might have three thoughts. What's, what, what, what are you first thinking when you saw that? How do we, yeah, do we know how to integrate that? And that's getting more complicated as you learn more tools, right? In AB calculus, you look at that and you go, like, no, because you really have two methods of integration in AB calculus. Just seeing it, like undoing the, the power rule, right? Or, you're just knowing it, or, What's the only other method you learn in AB? What? Substitution. W substitution or U substitution. So you might think you could use U substitution. You clearly should not try that on this one. And again, I just use that word that I hate, clearly. But can you tell me why it's pretty apparent-ish or maybe apparent that U sub... Yeah. 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 You, and, and what's not there? Well, there's not... It's not the 6 is fine. You don't care about the 6. There's nothing out here. You cancel it out. So you look at that and you're like, okay, you do substitution. And then what you want now, you got some other methods. You might think you could use what? Okay, that's not a method. Using a table is not a method. What are another method? What we just covered it. Taylor series. No. Between Taylor series and now. Parts, maybe. Parts might be triable, right? It don't work. What else could you try? Algebraic and trig substitution. Remember it was like last week, I know you're like blacked out of that part of your mind memory. You might think that there's some trig substitution, right? Like something with tangent maybe? Like, is there isn't. Right, there isn't. So in this case, this would be a calculator question on the AP exam. And if they ask you to find the exact answer of the calculator question, do you say any kind of all time you do like that? No. The most valuable thing you have on the test is what? Time. Do you get like extra time? It is time. So it is, what you said, calculator, it is not. That's actually your end. Use your calculator right now and tell me what that is for three decimal places. What do you got? 125.680. Who got that? Yay, you're popular today. Woohoo! So, the biggest challenge I think in this problem is recognizing whether or not you can integrate it or not, but that'll be mitigated if they give you a calculator. If this is on a calculator section, do not do it by hand. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Ah, what? Let's picture up here. But let's say instead of y equals f of x, we have x of t and y of t. Instead of delta x, what would we have? dx dt. And what would we have right here? dy dt. We have dx dt here and dy dt right there. So what does that turn the equation into? For distance, it turns it into this. The square root of the x dt squared plus the y dt squared. That's it. A and b are not x values. You know that they are t values. The, the time at the starting point and the time at the end point. The time at the starting point 
from the time of the end point. This is the thing you really have to be careful of. Though. You have to be very, very, very careful. What you have to be careful of. The arc length will be distance traveled only if what is true. Ah, that's a Okay. If I go 10 miles that one, 10 miles that, what's my distance traveled? Come on, close line displacer. Zero. If I travel 10 miles on this arc, and then travel 10 miles back, if you do that integral from time, let's say it's time to zero and time to 10, what would be the arc length you would get? You get zero because when it doubles back, what's going to happen? It's going to go to obliterate the front part of it. Parametric equation, you have to be very careful with because can they double back on themselves? Yeah. Remember all those ways in which you can draw a unit circle? Like you can like bounce back and forth. And if you do the integral wrong, you're going to get something that makes no sense. Like if you did zero to two pi, that would be one rotation. But if you did zero to four pi, you get double the answer. Does everybody see what I mean? All I'm saying is when you're doing it with parametric, you just have to be really careful about starting to do the values. Now the questions can be really nice to you sometimes. The questions can be really nice to you sometimes. They can set you up for success by doing this. What's the really nice thing that this question does? It tells it to you. <laughs> it tells it to you directly. It just says, go from zero to two pi. Do that for me right now. Write the interval for me. Don't, don't figure it out in the calculator. Just write me the integral. See if you can remember the formula and write me the integral. Do you agree with that? Who agrees with that? That's true. That's right. Now at this point, you might also ask yourself, can I do this one by hand? And you might be a little bit optimistic. Why would you might, why might you be a little bit optimistic that you can do this one by hand? <laughs> yeah, you're like sine squared, cosine squared, it's one, but what messes up the whole party? The, the four that's going to be up front, that messes up the whole party. So if you have your calculator, can you do this one in about 10 seconds? Do it now. Go.